Pastor Jeremy here, and we are so glad that you're joining us tonight. We want to welcome you tonight to our staff Christmas gathering, so come on in and join the fun. Hey guys, we're gonna all get together. We're gonna pray over our meal tonight, and uh, and all of you too. We want to pray for you too on Christmas Eve. So let's pray. God, I'm so grateful that we can be together. I'm thankful for these families that are really part of our family and everybody who's joining us tonight. And I thank you for all that you've done for giving us your Son, the biggest gift of all. And pray you bless this food, bless our conversation. I pray you be glorified in all of it. Amen. I think we're supposed to talk about our favorite Christmas traditions and share some of our favorite Christmas traditions with um, each other and with those of you watching at home. And so we can just kind of go around the room and share. But one that we started a couple years ago was we started doing an ornament exchange and I picked like a, it's a specific looking ornament. And so we always have it kind of, I always say it's blown glass. I don't, I don't know what they are. They could be, but they've got like a frosted appearance to them. And so um, every year we get we draw names with the five of us and we um, do an ornament exchange. And I think we have probably 30, 30 or so ornaments now. But it's kind of fun because we try and pick one that's kind of specific to that person. But then some years they're just kind of bizarre and silly and so we've kind of made our downstairs tree like our fun family tree and this one is more this is mama's tree (laughs) bye what about you my favorite would probably have to be our minivan express tradition and that is where we all hop in our van and we've got um little tickets that say minivan express and we go to Christmas in the park and go through the light display. And it's really fun because we get to have like hot, cho- um, hot chocolate and popcorn. And it's it's just really fun. On the side of the family, all the grandkids, we like, uh, well, on Thanksgiving, we draw names and we do like a secret Santa. But we haven't, we weren't Sounds able to funny. do that. Like, yeah. we go to get together for Thanksgiving. But in our own personal family, we do, which Jeremy talked about it, but we started probably seven years ago or so, started this star ceremony. Mm -hmm. And so each kid takes a year, you know, takes turns, and we put on O Holy Night by Celine Dion. Sometimes Mariah Carey, it depends, because it's a little faster version. (laughs) And so anyway, he carries it in, and then they get to put, once it's decorated, put the star on top of the tree. And then for the last four or five years, the kids have been making a fort in the living (laughs) on Christmas Eve that we've been home. There's been a few nights. um, And they all sleep in the fort. Mm -hmm. And so even last year, Jackson was like, no, we're doing it. And so we'll see this year being 17 and she's 13. We'll see if they'll do that. But Jet still loves it. So (laughs) Every year, we always made sure that we would sleep in the same room Mm -hmm. on Christmas Eve. And we would like stay up and like wait for Santa. And we still just make sure that we, like, sleep in the same room. It's kind of like a tradition, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of how they are. And then when they were little, like younger, they would, every Christmas morning, you could I could hear them. They're all, like, waiting in the landing, just trying to peek and, like, don't look, don't look. And they yeah, wanted to be have to downstairs. wait for the go-ahead. I have to oh, the go-ahead. yeah, that's what we do. Uh, Tell us about your tradition. What does your family do? <laughs> yeah. So it started when I was little, actually. My mom and I. It was just the two of us, and we would go out in the woods and get a Christmas tree every year. That was just what we did. Sometimes they were like little Charlie Brown trees. and So growing up, I never had an artificial tree. So with our kids, since they were like itty-bitty, we would always go to a tree farm and cut a tree down. 
And the place we used to go to is in Excelsior Springs and when we lived in Liberty. And it had a little place where you could like measure your kids and how big they've gotten. And they had a sled with horses. And that was just our thing. Every day after Thanksgiving, we would go pick out our tree and argue over, is it going to be this one? Is it going to be this one? And then, then they would, everybody would take turns like getting down on the ground and sawing part of it. And then the next one would go and saw part of it. And it was fun. Are you not? I'm too old. Oh, I'm that bad. What? I'm kidding. No, I'm booking. We need everybody in that. You join in with us. If we get started, we're all take a day and you sing it all with us, okay? So, everybody good with that? You guys. Yeah. Yeah. all days of Christmas? Okay, here we go. Everybody. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three French hands. Ha ha! Swans are swimming. Five golden rings. Oh, yeah! Four yeah! Three French hands. Ha -ha! <laughs> <laughs> Two turtle doves. <laughs> and a partridge in <laughs> a pear tree. <laughs> That's mine. Oh, hey, more of mine. Day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Eight maids are milking. <laughs> Seven <laughs> swans are swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Swans are swimming. Milking. Six. Seven geese of mine. Eight maids are milking. Seven swans are swimming. Five golden rings. Four calling birds. Three French hands. Ha ha! And the partridge in a pear tree. Number 12. Here, let's all try to do them together. Here we go. 12. On the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. 12. 
Son will be given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government, or of peace on the throne of David, and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, the angel told her. God has chosen to bless you. You will become pregnant and have a son, and you're to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. But Mary asked the angel, how can I have a baby? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the baby born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. While Mary was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her fiancé, being a just man, decided to break the engagement quietly so as not to disgrace her publicly. As he considered this, he fell asleep, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, don't be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary, for the child in her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this happened to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Behold, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. He will be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. This prophecy from Isaiah 7:14 
was given 700 years before Jesus was born. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He brought Mary home to be his wife, but she remained a virgin until her son was born. And at that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own towns to register for the census, and because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled from the village of Nazareth in Galilee and took with him Mary, his wife, who was great with child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. That night there were shepherds in the fields outside the village guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. A Savior, yea, the Messiah, the Lord has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. And suddenly the angel was joined with a vast host from heaven, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The angels left, and the shepherds said to each other, Come, let us go to Bethlehem and see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they ran to the village, and they found Mary and Joseph, and there was a baby lying in the manger. The shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard their story were astonished, but Mary kept these things in her heart. The shepherds went back to their fields, and flocks, glorifying God and praising God. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. And at the same time, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We've seen his star that arose and have come to worship him. Herod was deeply disturbed by their question as was all of Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Where do the prophets say that the Messiah will be born, he asked. In Bethlehem, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. O Bethlehem of Judea, you're not just a lowly village of Judah, for a ruler will come to you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. This prophecy is found in Micah 5 and verse 2 and 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 2. Both were written 700 years before Jesus was born. So Herod sent a message to the wise men, asking them to come see him. At this meeting, he learned the exact time when they saw the star. And then he told them, go to Bethlehem, search diligently for the child, and when you find him, come and tell me that I may go and worship him too. After this meeting, the wise men went their way, and once again the star appeared to them to guide them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child and his mother were, and they fell down and worshipped him. And they opened their treasure chests, and they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when it was time to leave, they went another way, because God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. 
Stay there until I tell you to return because Herod will try to kill the child. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Herod was furious. When he learned the wise men had outwitted him, he sent soldiers to kill all the baby boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under because the wise men had told him that the star had first appeared to them about two years before. Then later, when Herod died, God's angel appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, take the child and his mother and return to Israel. All those who wish to murder the child are dead. So Joseph obeyed. He arose and took the child and his mother, and he re-entered Israel. When he heard, though, that Herod's son had taken over as king in Judea, he was afraid to go there. But then Joseph was directed in a dream to go to the hills of Galilee. On arriving, he settled in the village of Nazareth, fulfilling the words of the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is the story of Christmas. Now, when I hear this story, I've heard it so many times, but every time I hear it, it gives me chills. And every time I hear it, I think about God prophesying and then fulfilling prophecy and literally coming to earth as a baby. Someone who, you know, could have come in any other way, some majestic way, but he came as a humble servant because he came to rule in our hearts. It just, it blows me away every time I hear the story. So you're hearing this on Christmas Eve. Maybe you're with your family. Maybe you could share this with your family. But the thing is, no matter who you are or where you are, you have the opportunity to respond to this message. The God of the universe sent this for you. For each and every one of us, he sent it for you. So you can accept him. You can be forgiven for your sins. You can accept him in your life. And this one who came to reign can reign in your heart as well. Hey, we want to thank you for joining us for our staff Christmas party. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas. I'll be right there.